Shalom. How's everybody today? I'm going to read Romans chapter 8, and then I'm going to do an understanding that um, our Father gave us. There is, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit is life in Jesus Christ, has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those living according to the spirit live the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is not in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life because, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, but live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live according to the spirit, you will put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Hallelujah. And if children, then heirs. And heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And if deed, indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willing, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondages of corruption into glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birthing pains together until now. Not only that we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray 
for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit. Knows the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good, for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among the brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? But he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for all. So how shall he not with him also freely give us all things who shall bring a charge against god's elect it is god who justifies who is he who condemns it is christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of god who also makes intercessions for us who shall separate us from the love of christ Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or a sword as it is written for your sake. We are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, can nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, that was a good reading. Amen. Okay. We all come from different circumstances. Spiritual muscle training is what this is called. We all come from different circumstances, good and bad. But what I noticed is brokenness. Father God gives us the abilities to choose. We don't always choose according to his word. And we are tested spiritually and afflicted for those choices. Those painful circumstances break us. They mold us and they shape us into who God has created us to be on our own account. We choose the path that we are walking by that God has showed us in his love through our path with him. He never left your side. And it is, and it is that walk and it, and it's us that walk away from his righteousness, choosing the wide and worldly path. The devil is like a roaring lion waiting to still kill and destroy. As soon as we take our focus off of Christ is when we shall fall victim to the attacks that the enemy throws. But God, rich in, in mercy, stays and he picks us up. He dusts us off and he confronts us and he shows us out. He shows us a way out of the mess and into the light that he's designed for you. All you have to be is humbly broken, childlike, children of God, humble before our God. He will bless you with the desires of our heart. A fervent childlike faith is believing in, is believing in Faith without compromise or refrain, knowing it because it is. Hallelujah. Amen. Keeping that faith of a child in adult years will be hard when we lose focus and not let our mind be 
deceived by the enemy, whispering negative thoughts into our minds against the grain. The word of God, know your spiritual muscles that are needed to be strengthened. Reading the Bible, the word is, is weight, is weight in to give power to your mind to fight the enemy. God already fought and won. And now all we have to do is strengthen our mind to show our faith over our fear in the enemy. Your enemy's negative thoughts that, that bring, um, that hurt you. When we, um, we can stop that by when we fellowship or we worship God with, with our, um, and that, that strengthens our spiritual muscles like strength training and cardio training does for the body. Reading the word of God and fellowshipping and praising and praying strengthens our mind and our relationship with God. For this is the love story of God. Shalom. I pray that everybody, Father in heaven, who listens to this message is blessed and has eyes to see and ears to hear. In Yeshua, in Yahushua HaMashiach's mighty name, Amen. Shalom.